Blessings to you this day as we join together for our daily devotion from St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California. Let's open with a word of prayer. Show us thy ways, O Lord, teach us thy paths. Thou who art always the same in thy coming yesterday, today, and forever, on thee do we wait. Amen. A reading from the fourth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Know therefore this day, and lay it to your heart, that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. There is no other. Therefore you shall keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you this day, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which your Lord your God gives you forever and a reading from St. Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, Paul writes, And to keep me from being too elated by the abundance of revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of the evil one to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I besought the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I will all the more gladly boast of my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then... I am strong. And a reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, the seventh chapter, from what we commonly call the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you seek the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give to dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? So whatever you wish that men would do to you, do so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Here in the readings. 
Lutheran professor of preaching from the 20th century, Paul Scherer, writes, My grace is enough for you. I suppose there are people who read those words and are m far more sure than they ought to be that Paul really heard them. We could manage too on such terms. He prayed once, and when he wanted did not happen, so he prayed again, and it did, and it did not happen either. We will go along with that. That's exactly how it is. But the third time Paul got an answer, and we haven't heard any. I cannot help but wondering about that. It is the silence, the terrible silence that says no to us. I wonder if it was not the silence, the terrible silence, that said no to him. No, but. Paul carried that burden all his life, you know. Some blemish was it that would make a Judean ashamed. The pride and the passion may be kept nagging at him all his days. Perhaps the secret of it lies away hidden somewhere in the agony of the seventh chapter of Romans, where Paul writes, The good that I would do, I do not. But the evil that I would not do, that I do. O wretched person that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death. But then, the doxology for a victory that hadn't yet been won, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you do not hear anything, is there not something that you ought to hear? My grace is enough for you. Let us pray in the words of St. Augustine. O God, our true life, in whom and by whom all things live, you command us to seek you and are ready to be found. You tell us to knock and open when we do so. To know you is life, to serve you is freedom, to enjoy you is a kingdom, to praise you is joy and happiness for the soul. We praise and bless and adore you. We worship you, we glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. We humbly beseech you to abide with us, to reign in us, to make our hearts your holy temple, a fit habitation for your divine majesty. O maker and preserver of all things visible and invisible, keep, we ask thee, the work of your own hands, who trusts in your mercy alone for safety and protection. Guard us with the power of your grace, here and in all places, now and at all times, forevermore. Amen.